Greetings and welcome to the O-Level Revision Series on Coordinate Geometry. In part 1 today, we'll be introducing the Cartesian Coordinate System. The success criteria for today would be for students to be able to draw and label the axis and origin of a Cartesian plane, as well as to plot and read points on a Cartesian plane. But before that, let's first take a look at this map of Singapore. Suppose I want to tell someone the location of Sultan Mosque. How would I communicate it? First, it would be nice to first divide this map into boxes or grids. Then we need a reference point where everybody knows. In this case, I'm going to assume everybody knows where National Museum is. And let's call this the start point. Then it will be easy to tell someone to get to Sultan Mosque, you need to move 10 boxes right, followed by 5 boxes up. Alternatively from the museum, I could also tell you to go 4 squares right and go 6 squares up. And then here you'll be at Simlim Square. You can go buy your computers and electronics gear there. Well, in mathematics, we also have a similar way of indicating the location of a point in the flat two-dimensional space which is known as the Cartesian coordinate system. This flat two-dimensional space is also known as the Cartesian plane, and this method is named after its inventor, René Descartes, a French philosopher. We first take this space and divide it into four quadrants using two lines. The vertical line is known as the y-axis, and the horizontal line is known as the x-axis. Where the two axes meet is a point that we call the origin, and this is our reference point, much like the National Museum in the Singapore map, except that every math student will know this point. The four quadrants are also labelled. Starting from the top right, we call it the first quadrant, and then we go in an anti-clockwise fashion to get the second, third, and the fourth quadrant respectively. Now, before we locate the point, we now need to assign some intervals to the x and y axis. We count up as we head to the right, and as we go to the left of the origin, we count down the negative numbers. At this stage, if I were to remove the y axis, you get your one-dimensional number line. Bringing back the y axis, we can now label it. We count up as we go up, we count down as we go down. Now we can locate a point. Let's take this point A. We are first going to assign a number to this location based on how far it is to the right of the y-axis. We assign this point A a value of 3 because it is 3 units to the right of the y-axis. This distance is also known as the abscissa. Next, we can assign this point another value based on the distance above the x-axis. So for this point A, it is two units above the x-axis. This distance is also sometimes referred to as the ordinate. Therefore, this coordinate of point A can be labeled as 3, 2, and we place them in brackets. Let's take a look at another example with point B. Let's do this one together. By drawing a reading line down, we can see that it is 4 units to the left of the y-axis, so the abscissa, or better known as the x-coordinate, is negative 4. Positive values are on the right, negative values will be on the left. The ordinate, or better yet the y-coordinate, that's at 3. It is 3 units above the x-axis. Hence, we can label this point as negative 4, comma, 3. And don't forget your brackets. Now it's your turn. Why don't you try reading point C? Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Let's go through the answer. By drawing a reading line up, we can see that it is 2 units to the left of the y-axis. So the x-coordinate is negative 2. By drawing a reading line to the right, we can see that the y-coordinate is negative 1. It is one unit below the x-axis. Hence, we can label this point as negative 2, comma, negative 1. 
Now, you can check your understanding of plotting points on a Cartesian coordinate system by playing this little game I've coded entitled Whack a Diglet. A link can be found in the info section below. Basically, you'll need to find the diglet hiding by the co given coordinates and just click on the green circle where he's hiding. You can play this on your own and try to score 25 points or play against a friend and see who can score higher within a time limit. For those who are watching on the SLS video version, the game will be embedded below. The hiding space for Diglett will increase as your score increases, and any mistake will reset all your points. Have fun! Before we end today's lesson, let's check back against the success criteria that we've set out at the start of the lesson. Are you now able to draw and label the axis and origin of a given Cartesian plane? Are you able to plot and read points on a Cartesian plane? If you have any questions or feedback on today's lesson, post them in the comment section below. We have come to the end of this video. Stay tuned to episode 2 where we'll be examining the concepts of gradient. Until then, have a great day of learning.